The year is 1917. Royal Flying Corps pilot William Terry Decker soars over World War I France. Flying through the clouds, Decker has lost his way, and he doesn't know where he's flying over either. Meanwhile, the war goes on without him. This is a story about the consequences of inaction, a story about a pilot who discovered a way to escape the horrors of war. Good for him, right? He may not be running out of fuel yet, but he is flying out of time. This episode was written by Richard Matheson and directed by William F. Claxton. As always, the alternative theories mentioned within may cause anxiety, rage, and disbelief. But that's why you're here, I hope. Kindly consider leaving a like, share, or subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Now, look out for the vintage planes on the tarmac. That pilot might not be in costume, but it will be the last flight. On a March day in 1959, a single prop biplane descended from the clouds. It's the Cold War, and the unidentified plane violates airspace above an American military base in France. After landing, the pilot is escorted away, wearing vintage clothes as if they were pulled from the MGM wardrobe department. Standing in front of the American base commander, the pilot identifies himself as William Decker of the Royal Flying Corps, something one would say during World War I. Everyone is puzzled, and the question is asked of Decker, what year is it? Decker answers 1917, before he's told it's 1959. The man is out of time, and maybe out of excuses. He blurts out that he went up on patrol with his flying partner, Alexander Mackay when they would end up fighting seven German aircraft. General Harper reminds Decker that Vice Marshal Mackay is alive and well and a World War II hero shooting down German bombers over London and saved thousands of lives. Decker is in disbelief and emphatically tells General Harper and Major Wilson that Mackay is dead. He must be. While held in protective holding, Decker is interviewed by Major Wilson. Wilson is trying to get to the truth, but is curious if Decker's flight from the past is genuine. Decker shares a story about Mackay's past injury that earned him a secret nickname, Lead Bottom, only said by Decker himself. Decker tells a story how while on patrol, he would just circle in the clouds and pray he wouldn't fly into the enemy. But on that day in 1917, he and Mackay got into a heated dogfight with German planes that badly outnumbered them too. Decker confesses he turned cowardly and flew away into a strange white cloud, leaving Mackay behind and alone. Wilson reassures Decker that Mackay survived the air battle and suggests that someone had to have helped him. Decker gets an epiphany. Maybe it was he who went back to save Mackay. Maybe this was his second chance to redeem himself. Decker pleads with Wilson to let him go, to save both Mackay and all the people Mackay saved during World War II. Though refused, Decker overpowers Wilson and the guard outside the door. While Decker reaches the tarmac and prepped his engine, Wilson puts a gun to his head for him to stop. However, Wilson lets Decker fly away and disappear up into the white cloud. Back in General Harper's office, after the general dresses down his major, Marshal Mackay arrives. After the formalities, Major Wilson cannot resist asking Mackay if he knew one William Terrence Decker. Marshal Mackay's answer surprises everyone. Mackay tells Harper and Wilson he surely knew Decker and that he had saved his life. Mackay goes on telling his story how they both were on patrol when a flight of Germans dropped on them. Mackay explains how Decker climbed high and disappeared into a cloud, but Decker returned, shot down three before he fell. General Harper shows Mackay Decker's possessions most recently left behind. Mackay identifies them as Deckers, but is anxious and confused. Major Wilson tells the Marshal that he better sit down, old lead bottom. The moral of the story is finish what you started. 
Decker returns to his own time of World War I and saves Mackay, the people he saved, and the timeline was the centerpiece. However, it's not an isolated example. Decker had already confessed that he makes a habit of not finishing. He tells Major Wilson when he was supposed to be on patrol looking for the enemy, he hides inside clouds and prays he doesn't have to do anything. The clue that puts an exclamation mark hinting this theory is where Wilson throws down a newly lit cigarette. We know the tobacco company would rather see him finish that cool, smooth experience with that refreshing flavor that can't be missed. Wilson could have at least offer Decker a light. Oh wait, he did. 1960 was only 15 years past World War II, fewer since the Korean War. Therefore, there is no nuance here to share with the audience. There will be no dithering about Decker's consequence if he returns. His instinct for pacifism is a character flaw, and he's literally rushed to have a moral metamorphosis. He not only punches down Wilson and the guard, he takes down one more outside. Everyone will be better off if Decker sets aside his personal objections and gets in line. Everybody wins if they finish. Regarding the lore of the big white cloud, we don't know how or why it appears. If only during times of war and violence, or created by the deep subconscious fears of pilots too close to the sun. Or it just shows up randomly. We do know it's not the first time a World War I pilot disappeared into the cloud. Decker spins a tale of a French pilot who disappeared and was never seen again. This small piece of lore has us guessing where and when the pilot escaped to, and the tragic result, if any, of not returning. The cloud is unnatural. It lingers above, we presume at least an hour. It behaves as a doorway, giving a window of time to pass through and back again. Maybe it's more than a wormhole but an opportunity for others to right their past wrongs, or right their future wrongs, but only if they choose. The Last Flight is an enjoyable episode because it's an enjoyable story, and if you read The Twilight Zone Companion, written by Mark Zickery, you'll learn that is exactly what the episode is remembered for. That and being the first episode written by Richard Matheson, most all of the dialogue is spoken indoors on two different sets. This could have been a stage play, complete with standout costumes using only sparse decoration and furniture. It's a simple story about consequences and redemption wrapped in time travel. The only thing I would have wished differently was to discuss or hint what would have happened if Decker had met Mackay. Would the world end in a time paradox? There was, albeit brief, discussion about what might happen if Decker didn't go back. As Marshal Mackay traveled closer to the base, did he feel anything strange? Was his trip getting rough and iffy? Well, no. We are told flat out. Marshal Mackay! How do you do, General? I'm very pleased to meet you, sir. I trust you had a comfortable flight. Oh, yes, yes, splendid. Good. I would have had Mackay answer, the trip was bumpy, and I wasn't sure I was going to make it there for a minute. But out of simplicity, or the period of the time, the episode didn't dare approach Decker avoiding his duty in exchange for self-survival. He was returning to 1917 because it was written in history. I give The Last Flight three dimensions out of five. It does have a couple tropes. Tag them war and time travel. This is Mr. G of Synergy leaving you with these final words. You can fly away from your troubles but you can't fly away from the Twilight Zone. Check out other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.